good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. With me in the studio is Professor Stefan Mundlos. He is head of the Institute of Medical and Human Genetics at the Charité Hospital in Berlin. Hello, welcome Hello. to the show. You're not doing research. You're offering kind of an outpatient clinic for genetic counseling. What kind of patients do come to your outpatient clinic? Basically, patients where there is a suspicion for a genetic disease. And that means that there is uh, certain conditions where the genetic component of this disease is uh, the major one. And you're looking for genetic disorders or do you give device um, what, what uh, to do about this? Well, we test for genetic diseases and then we also give advice what uh, to do and how to treat them. But we don't treat them ourselves. We are mainly a diagnostic uh, uh, facility. facility. Yeah. And, and let's talk about tumors. We know that breast cancer and colon cancer has a strong genetic cause in some cases. What about other malignant diseases? Are there other tumors which are bound to genetic disorders? There are a number of other tumors that are also have major genetic causes, for example, uh, stomach or of the thyroid gland, but these are much smaller in the percentage than compared to breast and, uh, and colon cancer, for example. And, and can you test for those kind of genes uh, in the other malignant diseases or just for breast cancer and um, colon cancer? Well, the breast cancer and colon cancer is the most common one, and the, the, the test system is the most efficient one. For the other hereditary, we can also test, but uh, it's more complicated, and as I said, it's, it's a very small and rare disease group. Okay, and if, for instance, a patient tests positive for breast cancer, does it mean that she um, gets this cancer in 100% chances, or um, are there any ways out of it? Um, no, it doesn't mean that they get it in 100%. It just uh, dramatically increases your risk up to about 80% from normally 10%. So there is a dramatic increase. But not all of them will get cancer. Okay. Sometimes cancer seems to run in families, even if there's no strong genetic um, disease underlying it. Um, how do you explain this finding? We see that quite often, that we have multiple different kinds of cancers in, in families and there is certainly a genetic component in there, but at the moment, for the great majority of these families, we cannot really test for that because there are probably multiple factors, many genes that contribute to that. And, and the problem with testing positive for some certain kind of tens cancer is that you can't really change your genome. So, so what do you do, for instance, if you would test positive for colon cancer? Well, you can do additional testing, for example, via endoscopy and others, and, uh, and with that you can detect cancer in a very early state and you will be able to remove it, for example. So that will definitely help. And if you would not know that, you would not do that additional testing. So there are real therapeutic consequences um, you can derive from this kind of genetic testing? Oh, there are definitely uh, therapeutic consequences, not in the way that you can eliminate it, but uh, you can test for it and by that you can uh, try to uh, remove the tumor before it mm -hmm. gets really big and uh, cannot be removed anymore. So before it gets malignant and per, uh, maybe kills you, you can just remove it in a very early stage? Exactly, yes. Okay. We got a viewer question from New Zealand. Our viewer Rosine Sutherland wants to know that um, her parents suffer from high blood pressure, hypertension, and she as a patient suffers as well from high blood pressure. Is this a genetic cause? Well, high blood pressure has a high genetic component. And if her, both of her parents suffer from that condition, then the likelihood that she has it too is quite high. But there are no simple genetic tests for it because there are probably many different factors and genes that contribute to so, it. So it's not just one gene that codes for high blood, high blood pressure? Exactly. Yeah. There are several ones and we can't test for that at the moment. And, and how high is the risk that um, Rosine passes um, the high blood pressure on to her daughter? Well, I would think that also depends on the father of her daughter. If he has a high blood pressure too, then the risk is relatively high. If he doesn't, then it sort of mixes up again and that certainly reduces it. Yeah. Uh, generally spoken, how should someone react when there are certain diseases run in the family? Should I go and see my GP and talk with him about it or should I go and see a geneticist? Well, the geneticist is not a GP and I think first people should talk to their doctor and uh, tell them about 
what they think about the, uh, their family and if this occurs more frequently or or not. And then I think the GP can decide and maybe send the uh, the family or the patient um, to a geneticist. To the specialist. Yes. And, and many people start to think about their genes when they're pregnant, when they're expecting a baby because of passing on the genes. And um, would you um, advise every single pregnant woman to go and talk with a gynecologist about genetic disorder or even see a geneticist? Well, she would. She should certainly talk with her uh, gynecologist about the possibility of genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if genetic testing is performed, then she should talk to someone who knows how they work and who can explain it to, to her. That could, can be the gynecologist, but can also be a geneticist. And it's not all about genetic diseases for the newborn baby. We got a viewer question from Norway. Sade Sutai Jesko from Norway had unfortunately two miscarriages in her past. And now she wants to know if she's at a high risk for a third miscarriage and um, if this could be genetic. Well, generally, miscarriages are quite common. So uh, that is um, certainly something that happens quite often. But there are genetic causes for that. And it, let's say if it happens another time, a third time, then one, one should uh, certainly think about it. And then she should ask her doctor. And there can be genetic tests that can be performed to test for an increased risk. And um, you as an expert, w w what do you think about those genetic home test kits? We got a viewer question from Mexico, Bordilla Vuelenza Guavera. She learned about a genetic test kit for at home. Just put some saliva on a stick and send it to a lab and, and see what's in your genes. Is it a proper way to deal with genetic illnesses? Well, we don't think it's a proper way because for any of these testings, you should have some sort of counseling. People should explain you what the test is for and what can be expected. And that is not done with these online tests. And the other thing is, yeah, the, what to do about genetic testing and about the result. Um, do you think it's, it's wise for, say, a 20-year-old to know that he or she will get Alzheimer when she's 80? Well, that's the big problem of genetic testing and especially of testing uh, healthy people, is that everyone has to decide on his or her own whether she or she uh, wants to really wants to know it. That's a very personal decision that can only be made if you have all the information and then really can decide on your own. It's not something that I can advise in that way. So it's not only a medical question, it's a little bit a philosophical question. Well, it's a very personal question. Thank you, Dr. Mundlos. Thanks for being in the studio. You're welcome. <laughs>